Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. 2024 is certainly going to be an amazing year for processors for the PC, but if you're looking to upgrade to the Zen 5X 3D variants, well, there could be a little bit of bad news. And I'm going to get into the release date information regarding that in just a moment, but we're also going to talk about Intel specifically. We're going to discuss a couple of rumors that have been floating around for a while. And I want to try to provide a little bit more context on them concerning Arrow Lake regarding not only hyper-threading, but also the rentable units that continuously are attributed to Arrow Lake. But I also want to mention real quick that I am dealing, unfortunately, with a bit of a cold at the moment. It's the reason I'm not on camera. So if my voice cracks a little bit or just sounds kind of, well, nasally, uh, sorry. But, um, yeah, there it is. So, anyway, later this year, we're, of course, expecting Ryzen 9000, or whatever the processors end up being called, to launch. The rumor is that it probably is going to be between April or June. I've heard from multiple people that an April announcement and possible release is seemingly going to be what happens. But, of course, ultimately, AMD could decide to postpone things, or the information could be incorrect. But these processors are going to be very performant indeed. There seems to be, on average, around a 10 to 15% IPC improvement. I'm going to go more into that perhaps in another video in the not too distant future. But ultimately, of course, we are looking from a ground up redesign here, and that is according to AMD themselves. And there are a plethora of architectural changes that are going to be present on these next generation cores. Zen 6, meanwhile, is going to be a much smaller upgrade in terms of IPC but there are going to be some other improvements basically in terms of io and bandwidth and also improvements of course as you would probably expect in things like clock frequency but getting to the news itself according to kepler l2 on twitter we will see ces 2025 being the debut for the x3d variants so this honestly to me makes an awful lot of sense and it does match up I believe with what um, I've said in a couple of videos that I kind of suspect it's going to be a very similar time frame between um, the X3D variants and the vanilla variants is what we've seen from multiple generations now from AMD. Ultimately speaking, there is a rumor that uh, Arrow Lake will also see a refresh of sorts and the refresh from Arrow Lake is going to basically be doubling the number of efficiency cores. Now, honestly, I'm still somewhat skeptical whether that's going to happen or not, because I keep hearing different things. Some people are saying it's definitely going to launch. Others are saying no, Intel have scrapped the plans. Um, so who knows on that? But what I will say is that I think the X3D variants are going to be very interesting to compare against the vanilla, because, of course, one of the things we do know is that the IOD essentially has parity between Zen 4 and Zen 5. What this basically means is there are going to be some situations where Zen 5 is going to be pretty bandwidth constrained. Now, obviously, that's not going to be across all applications, but if you're doing some really memory bandwidth intensive stuff, you know, across multiple processor cores, 16 cores, basically really pummeling the thread count, then I suspect that there could be some issues. I have mentioned in a few videos at this stage that a lot of my sources are essentially telling me that the X3D variants of Zen 4 will actually lose to the vanilla variants of Zen 5 when it comes to gaming. Of course, there are always outliers, and I probably suspect that you can name a few which really do love um, the X3D cache. Like, I think it's Microsoft Flight Simulator is one of them. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Let me know a couple of applications because maybe I could use them to test things out. But yes, generally speaking, um, as you know, as a general rule, obviously there are always exceptions, but I think the X3D variants of Zen 4 are probably going to be less performant, of course, than Zen 5, but that's come somewhat to be expected. Zen 5, um, sorry, Zen 4, excuse me, as most of you know, only had a pretty modest IPC uplift, but the majority of the performance upgrades were, of course, down to clock frequency. But now I want to switch your focus to Intel again. I want to cast your minds back to a video that I did a few days ago, or if you didn't check that out, well, I'll try to remember to leave a link to it in the video description, but we talked a lot about the PCH of Intel's Arrow Lake, which is known as Meteor Lake. Uh, 
PCH because basically they're one and the same. The PCHs are basically uh, shared. And there were also some other details that were actually mentioned in this document. Now, you can see here that the pre-alpha uh, Arrow Lake CPU is configured in BIOS to turn off performance cores. Now, I did cover this, as I mentioned uh, a moment ago, in a video from a couple of days ago. However, for some reason, this has started to come back into the uh, news again, as well as rumors concerning the uh, rentable units. So I just want to talk about this part. I'm going to bl blaze through it with speed. Well, maybe not speed, but uh, I'll get through it as quickly as possible. So you can see the configuration here. It says 8 plus 16 plus 1, and then 8 IA cores slash 8 threads. And those are disabled in the BIOS, and you can see why um, in the little note above. Basically, it's balked. Uh, this, of course, will be fixed with Final Revision Silicon, but currently the performance cores are essentially not doing so well. <laughs> Um, now, obviously, a lot of folks are immediately saying, well, that probably means that hyper-threading is disabled, and yeah, I mean, this is not new information, we've been somewhat reporting this for a while, obviously, until it is officially confirmed by Intel in a release, it is a rumour, however, this rumour has been really persistent, it has been... You know, one of the earliest rumours, I think, that uh, there would be some changes. I also want to give credit, just real quick, to Yuki ANS on Twitter, because they were the first ones to leak uh, this slide, but, or slides, should I say. Um, I also want, want to give some context. I can't get the exact reason that hyperthreading is disabled. I've heard multiple theories and some folks have said that they think they know the reason, but no one is certain. Um, I've heard things like just that they are making changes to the cores, and this is kind of like a, uh, how do I say, like an intermediary step. And basically they want to focus on single thread, and eventually, of course, the rentable units are going to be there, blah de blah de blah Others are saying that it was also somewhat to do with security. Um, honestly, I don't know. If I did, I would love to tell you, but I genuinely do not know. However, moving on to the rentable units situation, I'll go more into what rentable units are in a separate video, but this has been a rumor that has been swirling around for quite some time. And basically speaking, the rentable units have even appeared in uh, patent filings from Intel themselves. And so this is not some random thing. Um, again, Intel have essentially confirmed, quote unquote, that they're at the very least looking into this. And basically, um, you essentially are splitting instructions across different parts of the CPU based upon their complexity. Again, this is kind of a more complicated topic, and I'll probably do a deeper breakdown of this topic in another video um, but it's not particularly that meaningful right now because a lot of folks are saying that this is part of the 15th generation processors as far as I understand it is not so um, I would love to be wrong because I think it would be absolutely really cool to see it in action but as far as I understand it is a later processors that this is going to be part and parcel of like for example the 17th generation CPUs um, so yeah, it's going to be one of those things where it's going to be really cool, really interesting when it actually becomes a reality, but so far, at least to my knowledge, it is not part of Arrow Lake. So basically, in summary, Arrow Lake says goodbye to hyperthreading, so hyperthreading goes whoop out the window. Um, whoop, by the way, is me saying it's just been thrown out the window, and then rentable units are not present, so... That isn't to say, however, that these processors are not impressive. They will be pretty, pretty, pretty performant, actually, from what I'm hearing. It's just going to be very intriguing to see how well they perform in real life um, across a myriad of applications, of course, like gaming, um, like decoding, blah, 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 versus not only their predecessors, um, but of course, also Zen 4 and Zen 5. With that said, I think it's just about it for this particular video. Um, my voice is about to give up as well, so that's pretty good timing. With that said, uh, take care, guys. Have an amazing day. Stay safe. Bye for now.